Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a really long time. I have been away and I've had so much work. So that's the reason why I haven't been posting more tutorials. But I'm back and I want to show you guys um, the gist of the puff swags. Um, and this is a creative way in which you can use vellum um, to create some really cool artwork. Um, and I kind of wanted to show you guys the gist of how it's done. So, you know, you can import files, uh, animated characters into Houdini, and there are different ways that you can do it. Like you can use an Alembic file or you can use an agent. And on agent, you can just load an FBX. It can be whatever. And then on your FBX, you use a current clip that usually comes in with the FBX. In this case, I'm using a Mixamo uh, character based animation, and you can check it out here. So, so we've got a character animation, and this can literally be anything. Um, in this case, I wanna show you guys how I've done this with an animation. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is convert this, so it's no longer an FBX, and I'm deleting certain parts of it. So I'm getting rid of the headphones, just so that it's just easier to handle. All right, and here I am getting rid of the hands and the, sh and the shoes. I'm using a time shift. I'm freezing it on frame eight. Basically what I'm doing is I'm dropping a time shift. I am connecting it here and then I'm doing right click and delete channel and you can pick whatever frame you want it to freeze. So I'm freezing it on frame eight. Okay, I'm using a poly cap because if you do a VDB from polygons and they are like holes on the geometry, you're not gonna get the full information that you need. So in this case, I am using a poly cap to fill up the geometry, to like close the end holes like that. For example, here. So it closes it and then you can do a VDV from polygons without any issues. All right. The next step is smoothing the VDV because I want to have a VDV that's smooth and then I'm converting it to geometry. And there we go. We have a frozen frame. Okay. I'm going to delete this. I was using for other testing purposes that we don't need for this tutorial. But the idea here is that this can be anything. This can be a sphere. So we'll also test it out with a sphere just so that you guys understand that this can essentially be applied to whatever kind of geometry you wanna do it with. Okay. So then I'm doing a VOP. And inside of the VOP, I'm doing a noise multiplied by another noise, a ramp, and outputting that into my color. So what does that mean? The noise, basically, if we drop down a VOP, right, and we connect that VOP here, and then we do a turbulent noise, or any kind of noise, we connect it to the position and we output the color, it's gonna give me a noise onto the geometry, right? Um, but I wanted to get sort of like a specific kind of noise. Uh, and the noise that I wanted to get was fairly clean, not, not so detailed as this one. So that's why in this case, I'm basically grabbing another noise and multiplying it by the original noise and then using a ramp to control it. So if we do a, another turbulent noise here, connect it here, We do a multiply, and we multiply one noise by the other. And then we use a ramp to drive those values. You start to get something similar to what I had before. And then this ramp, even if you change it here, is not gonna do anything. You have to middle mouse, you have to go back and then you drive it out here. 
And then the other thing that is helpful is if you come here into your noises and you right click, you can do create input parameters as well as this one. I'm not gonna do it on the second one, but that means that you can control your noise from out here. Okay. So see, we begin to get those pockets, the pockets that we have here. All right. And these are the, the pockets is what we're gonna use to drive what parts inflate and what parts don't inflate from the geometry. So then an attribute paint, if I were to reset this, I'm just using this to paint on like custom spots on the geometry. So if you select this, you right click, you can choose the color you want. Let's choose black. With this black, we can kind of like paint in some of these details so they're cleaner. And this can be whatever shape you want this to be. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna paint like a circle here just for the sake of explaining the purposes. And then I have an expression, very simple expression. Basically what this is is cd.r is less than 0.1. We drop it from scratch. Basically, all we're doing is a group expression. Connecting this here, we're running this through the points and we're doing add cd.r is less than 0.1. and it just selects all the parts that are white, nothing that is black. Then this wrangle is telling Houdini, the mass is equal to one and the mass is equal to add CD. So essentially what it's gonna do is that the parts that have a one value the, the mass is gonna be a one. So the, the, those parts are gonna be active. And then the black parts have a value of zero, so they're not gonna be active. And then I'm doing a vellum struts. So if you were to just drop down vellum struts here, if you do vellum struts, This one, you don't want to pick this one. You want to pick Vellum Configure Strut Soft Body. You'll bring in these two nodes, okay? And then you connect this here, and then you can do Vellum so, Vellum Solver, and then you plug the Vellum Solver in here, and then the last thing that you want is the Vellum Constraints. So we want to do a vellum constraint and we connect that here. pressure and you can see my pressure here is really really high on the vellum constraints the initial the initial part like I really didn't change anything then the vellum pressure, then the vellum constraints. And on the constraints, I am using this group here. 
So we want to do here, we do points, we select the group that can be called anything, which is basically what's forcing it to, to affect a certain part and not another part. Actually, I think this, I'm not even using this at all. I think that didn't work. That was part of my, one of my tests. But if we go here, let's see what we get. The values aren't gonna be dialed in, but it should give us something to work with. So it's pretty cool because you can see that only the white parts are being affected, right? But what we're gonna wanna do is here on the forces, we wanna set this, this to zero and then the pressure gonna set it up really high gonna increase the rest length and then the damping ratio to 12 Boom, and then we get stuff that inflates. And just to prove the point, of course, if you guys know Houdini, you will see that this is gonna work with anything we do. Like if we do this in a sphere per se, we can apply it to the sphere, we run it through the same system and then we can inflate the sphere based on where these colors are. I think I went too high here. Let's do like a hundred. Heck, let's do like 50 just for the sake of like. Just for proof of concept. Here we go. So we've got that working. Then I'm using a vellum post process with a little bit of blur. So we played a couple frames. You'll see that the post process can do some pretty fun stuff. Um, and let's let me show you guys here what it does. So without the pause process, I'm just gonna play a couple frames. And that's good enough. All I need to do is sim like three frames or something. And then the, with this blur, I'm kind of smoothing out certain areas. You can see it smooths out like where these parts intersect here. So what I do is I cache this so that I have just a flat frame. So if I were to cache this, I'm just gonna do like test. And I'm gonna cache this one frame. It's just one frame that I'm caching to disk. So if I, if I were to show you guys it's just a file cache. You connect it here. Instead of construct, I'm gonna do explicit, and I, this is not time dependent. And I like to do dollar os slash dollar os and get rid of this. So this is gonna create a folder. If I name it test, 
creates inside of your geo on your hip directory it creates a test and then a test folder and then it puts in the name that I put in here so it's gonna call it test and it's just one frame so then we do an attribute delete except for the color because I'm using that later but the reason why I do an attribute delete is because if we don't then on the next part of the simulation it keeps the forces and the velocities that are coming in here so it doesn't look right however if I get rid of everything like all the velocities and stuff I can come in here and use that this part here as my collider um, connect my cloth that we just simulated as my base cloth and then my collider is the actual geometry from the character and then right here I am doing a time warp so that my character's animation loops and then right here since I'm starting on frame 8 my character animation should also start on frame 8 Mate esa partecita que se me desconectó la puedes borrar. So output frame range, input frame range from frame 8 to the end, coming here, you'll see that my animation now matches, right, and then if we hit play, then the sort of the pop swap dress that we just made is going to follow follow the geomet the geometry moving from our character here see and then I'm deleting everything on the character except for the shoes and the hands and merging them here. And that's the gist how how to create how I'm creating the pop swag animations. Now here's a thought. There's a couple of cool things that I'm doing with the UVs and, and texture. If you guys wanna hear a hear about those, uh, give me a comment or um, give me a like and uh, and that way I know that this is something that can interest you to learn more about how pop songs have been made or tricks and tips with Vellum. Thank you guys for watching and glad to be back.